What's up, everybody? Roger and James here from the Disc Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to kind of be taking a little bit of a... I wouldn't really say retro, but we're going to be taking a look at Disney's Split Second, which is a video game which came onto Xbox Games with Gold in February. Um, it was included in the monthly package. Um, I've been playing it and really enjoying actually playing this one. It's been one of those ones that it's been on my like radar for years since I was like, well, it's, it's technically a Disney game, but it's a racing game. Um, they announced we got Brave coming up in March, so we'll probably do the same in a few weeks' time. And just to, just because it's so light on video games, it's just it's like something's out on my Xbox One that I haven't played before. Well, that's pretty much enough for me at the minute, just to kind of jump into something um but right split second um racing game with a slight difference because it's kind of you set in the mood you're making a tv show and so you blow f you press trigger points and things drop down and big action things sweep in then you've got little like variant missions where you can't be la if you're last when you reach a checkpoint you get eliminated you then got a race against the clock to beat your time you've also and I'm, I'm so, I've, it's, it kind of reminds me of, I'm just trying to think, it's, it's, I've just really been in quite enjoying it. It's, it's quite a really solid racing game. Yeah, I remember playing it back when it first came out. Uh, I was super excited for it uh, on the Xbox 360. I still love it. It's still been a, a great game. Uh, I'm very glad that people are getting a chance to play it. The one thing that disappoints me is it never got a sequel. Because I'm assuming the sales weren't all that hot no. for it, but you know there are there's a lot to the game, but there's also a lot that could have been refined mm. uh, with the game. I think a lot of the ideas were great, and the execution was really well done. But there was always room for improvement, always room to expand on the ideas, like the trigger points you yeah. were talking about. Um, but yeah, th this was a really fun game. It got overlooked. I think it, it came out in a time period when the kind of arcadey racers were kind of mm. flooding the market. I think Pure came out about the same yeah. time. Well, Pure is so, Disney as well, isn't it? It is. So they yeah. they might have they might have hurt themselves with a little bit of cross branding. I do remember the one thing uh, that frustrated me both back then and and also replaying it this past week was the rubber banding AI. Uh, if you're playing single player you can never truly build up a very big lead because the AI will cheat or whatever to yeah. get back right on your butt. And so it did result in losing some races in very cheap ways, at least in my opinion, mm. but not as bad as some alternatives. I think Pure was actually much worse in that regard. But Yeah, it's um, I'm obviously, I mean, I think like it's probably coming to the end. I don't know what, if it runs to the 15th of march or if it's done i can't remember off the top of my head since it's xbox 360 i believe it's for a full month so yeah. it should be february 15th through yeah, march 15th. It's, it's just that thing of like i i actually i think one of the reasons i've really been enjoying it as well was as a, a little bit of a palette cleanser for me because um coming up for christmas i had a couple of games like call of duty world war Two, assassin's creed origins and Uncharted Lost Legacy. So I had like three, it's always that quiet period, January and February. So I played some really big, epic titles. So jumping in the split second for a week was actually just like, ah, this is, I always like to say completely different because I'm not a big, I'm not a big racing fan, but I have always seemed to had, I've always seemed to play them, but I'm not like, I've got to have that, you know, day one. I don't like realistic races. I just like a little bit of racing fun here and there, a bit more casually, a little bit more. And this game just, I think, just slides straight into that kind of category for me. Yeah, it, this is a popcorn game. You yeah. know, it, it's great that its story actually revolves it around being a TV show because it fits into that disposable media kind of gameplay. There's not a deep story here. Your objective is basically just to complete the campaign mode, maybe play a little of the multiplayer, although obviously the online is quite dead. So yeah. you better better have some uh, split-screen local uh, racing going on there. But yeah, it's pick it up, play a couple of races, move on to something else. It's fun. It's yeah. just straight-up enjoyable yeah. Mindless fun for a good couple hours. And let's just say, I because I, I picked up a fifteen, you know, I picked up like a, a three month plus three month Xbox Games with Gold card on Amazon the other day for like fifteen quid, and it's like 
Well, I feel like I got my 15 quid out of this month alone, and I got Brave next month as well. So, um, Xbox games were going to glitch just because, because where I was buying all the Xbox games when they came backwards compatible, I've literally decided I don't need to because every single time I do that, I like the following month, they were being coming on to. Um, I think literally Xbox have gone, well, every month we're going to have a Disney game because that's how it's feeling at the minute. Um, and I'm quite happy with that because the Xbox is literally my backwards compatible Disney game box at the minute because if you look on my install app, all it is is just Disney games one after another because I play on my PlayStation 4 Pro on everything new, but it's like, well, if, I tell you what, if, if, if PlayStation 5 can work this out properly, it, it would be a massive back catalogue. But also, I look at Split Second and go... Ah, Disney, when you kind of, you know, you took on a studio and you would release a, a video game that wasn't connected to a franchise, you take a risk, and you treat video games as a medium to just that you could, like you do with movies, where you try some different things, rather than just, just oh, let's just throw out another carbon copy. This is like, when, you know, Disney do, I've made some, there's some odd games in their back catalogue of just like, that's what you should have been doing, they could have been a powerhouse in video games, had they not just I had an executive that just balked the minute a video game doesn't do very well. Not even just like bulk, balking about whether or not a game is doing well, but just having some consistency. Yeah. You know, five years we're going to contract out all our games. Five years we're going to have everything in house, and then we're, we're going to contract out everything again. Just keep it <laughs> consistent, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think it's also important that this will never fly no. at Disney, but. They need to be able to look at a product not necessarily as its immediate financial yeah. result, because this is something that we see from Disney all the time. Where, you know, they'll try out a product, it won't do terribly, but at the same time, you know, they invest a million dollars into it, they get five hundred thousand back. Whereas if they had put that million dollars into more fr uh, frozen. Uh, yeah. merchandising, they could have gotten $2 million back, and so they're they're not looking at it as a $500,000 profit, they're looking at it as a $1.5 million uh, mm. dollar potential loss, and they kind of need to break this mentality, and like I said, they're not going to. This, no. this has been how they've operated since yeah. 1939 or something like yeah. that, so... It's just, I think it's just like with something like um, Split Second, and kind of that feeling of going, this is what you guys could have done if you just had some you know, some kahanas to kind of sort of just try and do stuff outside of just your franchises and allow franchises to grow from something else, you know, rather than just, you know, the movies and TV shows, you know, they are fantastic at throwing out new content. You know, that's, they know they've got to make it, but video games are, you know, you can still see them going, we don't know what to do in this space. And, you know, something like, and you know, like you've looked at it, something like Uncharted and Grand Theft Auto and Halo, all these massive franchises that they they use the video game medium. Um, but Disney, are like, no, we just gonna put something from over here and put it there. And Split Second is that a feeling of just like, if you guys had some teams, some studios, just working on games all the time, coming out of original content, you might. Hit, you know, yeah, you're not going to create a Halo and Grand Theft Auto every time, but once one bad sale doesn't mean you close, you know, you know. Like otherwise, you know, after Alice, Alice through the Looking Glass, we wouldn't have had any more Disney movies. You know, you they don't do this. <laughs> yeah. One second is that thing of going, you guys could have, you could do something. You've got the money behind you to do something properly if you understood the business, but you don't understand it. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things where a movie. A, a new movie IP can do really well right out of the gate, especially mm. with a big studio behind it, someone like Disney. Video games, oftentimes you'll find that that first generation video game won't do quite as well because people are like, what is this? Yeah, what is yeah. Split Second? What is Assassin's Creed going back to the yeah. original? What is Watch Dogs and so forth? And then you'll find that, you know, given a chance to mature, given a chance to Upgrade. take this, yeah, take the systems that were in the original game. Uh, refine them, upgrade them, make them uh, take out the parts that didn't work and add in parts that you know make it better. And you know the first Assassin's Creed was okay. Assassin's Creed Two and the whole Ezio yeah. trilogy is fantastic. It's it still holds up rather well. Some mm. of the mechanics are a bit dated, but it still holds up. A split second two or 
you know, whatever, could have taken these bits. The yeah. the ever changing track, the some of the power ups that you had, the <clears throat> ideas behind the races, and could have turned it into a really, really entertaining game. Could have mm. taken what we had in the first one and multiplied it by X. Who knows? But we're not going to. No. And also, I mean, I have had another thought. Is that, you know, it's like split second. You could kind of, you could rework this and put this on the Switch and it would probably sell. It would be do well. Um, and there's lots of other titles they could do this with and just bulk out a bit. But, you know, this is split second. Was that kind of, is this the like thing of like, oh man, you guys could, you really could, like, kind of could do something and fund some good games if you really kind of just you know like it's like now it's, you know, you've got you don't buy studio you know they buy studios they do ba badly one game and they chuck it on the fire the following week um so maybe in some ways just like well you're good at making games you can you are hire you to do this and split second is that thing and like you guys had something here but you kind of just yeah, yeah, we don't understand it. Get rid of it. But as I said, split second, I've been really enjoying it, and it's like it's been a really nice kind of like I said, experience to play. And it and it doesn't really look like it's. This is where again we come down to this thing of like we were talking about this in the Res Discord the other week about how there hasn't really been this big jump. You know, you play in these like three sixty games. This could have been released today, and I don't think many of us would. Would be like, oh my god, this is the worst. It it doesn't. These games don't look that bad. No, they don't. But also, never underestimate the internet's ability to decry the visuals in a game yeah. and call it the worst thing ever because people are just jerks like that. Uh, but yeah, if we're being one hundred percent honest, it's still a good looking game, especially once the special effects kicking in. Yeah, you know, you're on the airport map. And you blow up the ATC tower, and it's yeah. just come crumbling down, and and you've got to get under it and before the it, it yeah. breaks out, and all that. It looks fantastic. It looks great, and they had they had the epic set piece moments, yeah. just really well mapped out. It it's a good looking game. Mm -hmm. It does not look pixel perfect. It does show a bit of its age, but yeah, like you said, it, it's iterative. It's yeah, you know, it's fun. It, it doesn't look like Forza 7 or Gran Turismo, whatever that's up to, but it doesn't have to yeah. either. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I'd rather play Mario Kart 8 than Forza. It's just, you know, it's for fun. But I'd love to know your thoughts on this one here. You probably will have seen some... This I'll be using a bit of gameplay of this one for a, probably a week or two because this is, this is, it was just a fun game to play. But I'd love to know your thoughts on Split Second, especially if you've been playing it recently on the Xbox One with the games with gold. Um... Let us know what you guys think. I mean, check us out on all the different video and audio platforms. You can also check us out over at thiskingdom.com and you can um, do all the social media chains. Where can they find you? Heroiclegacy.com. On that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Laters. Later. Later.